uh, I was asked to prepare a, an overview uh, of some of the, the more interesting parts of my life. Uh, in 1967, at the age of 14, I met a Zulu street musician outside a cafe near my home in Yeovil, Johannesburg. His name was Mtonganazo Mzila, from the district of Gandai, Emabomvini, Msenga. And this chance, this chance meeting ended up with me some 46 years later, standing here today before this august body accepting an honorary doctorate in music. It has been an incredible journey for me, and I would like to share some of its defining aspects with you this morning. During the 60s, the 1960s, the streets of Johannesburg were constantly resonating with the sounds of Maskanda musicians who played guitar, concertina, and violin. They played this music as they walked to work or on weekends when uh, visiting friends down the road or to the hostels on the edge of the city. It was a troubadour tradition, adapting traditional songs to Western instruments, but also composing original songs which were social commentaries on various subjects affecting the world of the migrant worker. All of these musicians were migrants from Natal, living in the hostels around Johannesburg and Soweto, or in the worker compounds in the city, or living in quarters in blocks of flats, or other municipal accommodation. They were construction workers, flat cleaners, hospital workers, timber yard, and other unskilled industrial workers, traditional tribesmen who came to the city to find work. The tradition of street music I stumbled upon had been forged over decades of experimentation as the ebb and flow of migration to Johannesburg and Durban exposed these migrants to new ideas and formats. The guitar and the concertina were reconceptualized and retuned and new genres developed and as a youngster I was amazed at the innovative manner in which Western instruments were thoroughly Africanized. The guitar developed from a strumming style, which was called uguvamba, to a highly sophisticated picking style with fingers called ugupiga. Whereas the guitar could simply be retuned and strings changed around, the, concert, the concertina had to be physically taken apart and all the buttons changed around in order to play Zulu music. The migrant labor hostels were the place where professional concertina button changes worked and made a living. This hidden world opened up to me as I learned more and more songs. Often I did not know what I was singing. But I had a musical ear and I could pronounce Zulu perfectly in a melody. This led to some awkward moments where I rendered some very lewd, bawdy and explicit songs with the innocence of a 15-year-old which made my audience at the hostels laugh until they cried, saying, he pinned their foot, he played again, played again. And I would play it again, happy that they found my performance so intensely moving. A year later, I met Sipo Mvuseni Mkunu, who came from Makabeleni Kranskop, Natal. He was my age and a tremendous composer of original music. We teamed up as a duo and called ourselves Johnny and Sipo. And we played at the hostels, the rooftops of apartment buildings, and later in very small folk music clubs that were prepared to take a chance on a racially mixed duo. Sipo introduced me to his Zulu dancing team, and I joined them at Wema Hostel at the bottom of Rissig Street, Johannesburg. They danced a style called Humkonko, sometimes also referred to as Ishameni. Here I experienced my first clash with the apartheid authorities, I was caught inside the hostel and was arrested in terms of the Group Areas Act and the Separate Amenities Act and taken to John Foster Square and then taken home to my mother, to my mother as I was underage. The police explained I was breaking the law, but even worse, I was in an area that was dangerous to me as a white person. My mom was obviously worried and asked to speak to the dance leader, a Mr. Richard Zwane, who came to our flat, sat down, and assured her that I would be looked after at all times. When he returned to the hostel, he told the dance team that, 
this white boy has really joined this dance team. And I was giving the dance name Sikei Jigile Shobin. I danced every Saturday and Sunday at Wema, avoiding the police as best I could, as well as the municipal security guarding the gates of the hostel. The arrests and intimidation got increased as I got older, but that's another story for another day. From 1970 to 1977, over that seven years, Sipo and myself played traditional Maskanda music. I learned the rules of composition and the rules of presentation. However, from time to time, I could not help hearing echoes of certain characteristics of Celtic folk music in some of the Zulu war songs, Scottish and Irish. I heard there was, it was just something that made me feel a conversation could be had between the two traditions. One song in particular was a traditional war song, Ihubo la Mabuto, which was went by the name Usabin Ganon, You Are Afraid of the Cannon. And this song paid, paved the way for me to see if a musical mixture and a conversation could be constructed around these two different kinds of folk music. Now, I'm just going to go through the song quickly because it's, it's very interesting because at any moment in any composer's life, there are epiphanies. These are moments that just suddenly you see through, you have a breakthrough. And this song gave me a breakthrough because like a Scottish reel, um, the, the military uh, uh, bands with bagpipes, uh, it's a 6-8 it's rhythm. So it's 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And the song goes, Where sabi nganon hubalegela Wachugutela Where sabu gutumowayo la shona Wachugutela Where sabi nganon hubalegela Wachugutela Where sabu gutumowayo la shona Wachugutela Where sabi nganon Wachugutela Where sabu gutumowayo la shona Wachugutela Okay, so, so that I heard in that melody, I heard a Scottish reel on bagpipes. So I heard that there were there was a melodic connection and I started to introduce into our Maskanda music these Irish and folk, uh, folk Irish music and, 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 and Scottish music and started to get this strange mixture. Um, we began an experiment which led to the music of Juluga and the concept of crossover music. Music that encouraged the mixing of language in the same song, melody in the same song, rhythm in the same song, and the rules of composition of each to be tried to mix them in the same song. Although Juluga was the first musical experiment of its kind in this country, it is important to acknowledge the fact that the idea of mixing music and cross-cultural experimentation was already existing in the subculture of Zulu migrant labor. In his groundbreaking work, Zulu Transformations, a study of the dynamics of social change, uh, published by the University of Natal Press in 1962, Dr. Absalom Villagazi identifies a cultural subsection of tribes people in the Natal Midlands who were important agents of cultural transformation. They were known as the Amatata. Atata is a derogatory term. It's a rude word meaning somebody with no fixed cultural address, cultural driftwood. These were farm workers who also did stints of migrant labor to the big cities and constantly had to adjust their worldview and their outlook. They were the people in between orthodox traditional tribal people and the urban Christian modern Western world. They gave their allegiance to neither, but they tried to find a third way a mixture that could incorporate aspects of both. 
The Amatosa referred to them as Amaluluane. They bats, because you don't know if they're birds or mice. They're somewhere in between culturally. The quintessential Tlaatla is a man who wears a three-piece suit and car tire sandals. He says, I'm in both worlds, and I don't give my allegiance to neither, and I don't care what you think about that either. Uh, the Tlaatla joins the Christian church because he loves the choir music, which he then steals and he does war dances to them, which upsets the Christians. Although he may join the church, he also performs traditional rituals to his ancestors just in case. He, intro he introduced new ways of courtship, ugushela, with corresponding modernizing of a young man's courtship attire, image, and presentation. It is these Amatlaitla who transformed much of traditional music, dance, fashion in the 1940s and the 1950s, using Western instruments and values to modify and bring the traditional tribal worldview into line with the forces of social change. If there is a continuity in the work I've done, it is this underlying idea of crossing boundaries and mixing competing approaches. It forms the background and influence in the crossing over of musical forms in most of the music I have composed. It is an attitude and approach to culture which, in the terms of Levi Strauss, the great French anthropologist, his notion of bricolage, being a cultural handyman, fixing and changing the world with anything you have at hand that has given life and meaning to what I do. Finally, I say with no fear of embarrassment, I am a Thank you for this great honor and validation.